Hi, sixth grade. Welcome back. This is Miss Rigfelder. Today we're going to be looking at dividing multi-digit numbers, five-digit by two-digit numbers. The standard is 6.ns.2. Let's go ahead and take a look at that standard a little more closely. So the paper um, that you're looking at should be your next blank paper in your composition notebook, and it should be headed exactly like you see it here. Um, 6.ns.2, divide five-digit by two-digit numbers. You also want to go ahead and write down the standard. That's this line right here that I've just underlined. It says fluently divide multi-digit numbers using the standard algorithm. Standard algorithm is just another fancy word for process, really. So you can write that down next to it just so you know what that means. And then also, I just want to point out, every time you see that little pencil, you're going to want to make sure that you're writing everything down on that page. There's um, a significant amount of writing, but we're really only going to go through one problem. So I just want to make sure that you have all the step-by-step -step instructions. You also want to make sure that you write down the instructions here for the actual problem, which says to find each quotient. Remember, the quotient is the answer to a division problem. So find each quotient to two decimal places. So that's just another way of saying the hundredths place. So remember, when we're dividing to round to the hundredths place, we are going to go actually to the thousandths place so we have that number at the back door. So let's go ahead and get started now. All right, so as you can see, um, I went ahead and said divide because we're going to start by dividing. So remember, we're going to do divide, multiply, subtract, bring down. The first thing that we need to look at, because our divisor has two numbers in it, we want to look at the first two numbers of our dividend. Remember, the divisor is on the outside, so I'll point to it here in red, um, pink, rather. And our dividend I've now pointed to here in purple. So we want to look at the first two digits of our dividend, 88, and we want to ask ourselves, how many times can 40 fit into 88? Or how many times does 40 go into 88? So that's going to be about two times. So we're going to go ahead and multiply. 40 times 2 is going to give us 80. And we're going to stop right there. It's going kind of crazy now. Um, so now we get the 80. Then we're going to subtract. 88 minus 80 is going to give us 8. And then we're going to bring down. So then we'll bring that 5 down. And I'm sorry, not the 5, the 8, <laughs> the second 8. And then we repeat. So again, divide, multiply, subtract, bring down. This should be your first segment of work. Then you're going to go on to the next piece here where we're going to divide again. So how many times does 40 go into 88 again? So 40 goes into 88 again twice. So 40 times 2 is still going to be 80. Excuse me. We're going to go ahead and put that 2 up there in our quotient. And then we're going to subtract the 80 and we're left with 8 again. And now we bring down that 5 and then we repeat. So you want to make sure that you get each one of those steps and that you've written all of this down. Now we're going to bring, after we've brought down the 5, we're going to say how many times does 40 go into 85? Well, it goes in twice because, again, 40 times 2 is still 80. So we're going to go ahead and multiply, subtract, bring down, and then repeat. So right now you're at 2, 2, 2 for your answer. And notice how I put the first 2 over the second 8. That's because 40 times 2 is 80. So you don't want to, you don't want to make a mistake and put that first 2 over the first 8 because that would be saying that 40 goes into 8 two times, which is incorrect. So now we're going to go ahead and pick up where we left off again. How many times does 40 go into 52? Well, it really only goes in once. So now we multiply 40 times 1 is 40. We're going to put that right underneath the 52 and subtract it from the 52. So then we're left with 12. And then we have something a little special here. Since we don't have a zero, I'm sorry, since we don't have any more numbers to bring down, that's when we're going to need to add our decimal decimal zero. So I actually say it out loud every time I make the decimal point. I say decimal, decimal, zero. I put a decimal in the quotient. I put a decimal at the end of the dividend to show where I started adding numbers. And then I add the zero that I'm then going to drop down and then repeat. So now we have 120. You can start to see this problem is probably not going to be a repeating decimal. It looks like it's going to be a terminating decimal. Remember, um, that's a decimal that ends, basically. So you're going to want to make sure to write everything down on this page. And then we're going to do it one more time. How many times does 40 go into 120? So that's going to be 3. Then we're going to multiply 40 times 3, get our 120. And then 120 minus 120 is 0. So for this problem, you are done. This was, in fact, a terminating decimal. 
So the final answer is going to be 2,221.3. So hopefully you are with me step by step. We are going to go ahead and I'm going to set you free on your own problem here. On your same paper in your composition notebook, I would like you to go ahead and complete this problem that you see here, 69,658 divided by 95. So I want you to show all of your work for this problem. You don't have to write the steps like I did on the right-hand side, but I do want you to show all of the work. Um, so go ahead and pause the video now and do that, please. All right, so now I'm just going to go ahead and show you the work that I've done here for this. So the first thing that I did was I needed to find out how many times 95 goes into 6. It doesn't. 95 doesn't go into 69. It doesn't. And then so now, now I need to look how many times 95 goes into 696. So my guess was 7 because I was thinking 95 was a little close to 100 and 696 is pretty close to 700. So on the right, I did the math. I did 95 times 7. I should see all of your scratch work for these 95 times 7. So all this guesswork that you do with division to see what goes into what, I should see that on the side of your paper. If I don't, I'm going to ask you to show me your work and then you're going to have to redo it. So just make sure that you're showing me all of that multiplication work. Don't use a separate sheet of paper for that. You always want to have that work right next to your problem. So now we're going to put the 7 there. 95 times 7 is 665. Then we subtract and we got 31. We brought down the 5. And now I'm going to start trying to figure out how many times 95 goes into 315. So I guessed about 3 because, again, 95 is about 100. Um, 100 times 3 is 300. So looks like we got 285. So we're going to add the 3 there. We're going to put that in the quotient, and then we multiply that out. Now we subtract. We have 30 left over. Bring down that 8. So now we have 308. We're going to be using the 3 again that we just talked about. <laughs> and then we have to add our decimal, decimal 0. So now we have 230. We want to know how many times 95 goes into that. Well, we know that it's not going to be 3 because that's 285. So now we've got to do 95 times 2 to see what that is. So 95 times 2 gives us 190, so we go ahead and subtract the 190 from what we had there, the 230, and we're left with 40, and then we bring down another 0, and that gives us 400. Now remember, we're finding each quotient to two decimal places, so even though we are about to know what's going to go in there in that second decimal place, the hundreds column, we actually have to divide out to the thousandths, so we have that back door. So now we've got 95 um, times 4. So we can't stop here because if that next number happens to be like a 7, then we need to round that 4 up to a 5. So we have to know what that next number is going to be. So now we know that that next number, because we have 200 that we're trying to find out how many times 95 goes into 200, now we know that that next number is 2. We don't need to do any more of the multiplication or the subtraction or anything like that. We just need to know what that number is right there behind the 4 so that we can round it appropriately. So now we're going to go ahead and around that there. So let me just add this one piece right here so that you can see it, the rounding piece. So what we really had was 733.242. And remember from our rounding video, you draw the door, you look next door, and then that four stays the same. So that's how we ended up with that problem there. All right, and now I'm going to add something for fun. Um, I'm going to add something called the problem of the day. I also added a cute little picture of my new running shirt that came in. Woo -woo. It says, I run, I run, I'm slower than a herd of turtles stampeding through peanut butter, but I run, <laughs> which is absolutely 100% true. So we have this one problem, which we are going to call the pod, the problem of the day. So I would like you to go ahead and write this problem down on a half sheet of lined paper that's separate. Don't pull the paper out of your composition book, please. Please just use loose leaf lined paper. You can even use one of your large stickies if you have those. Any of that's fine. You want to make sure, though, right now that your name, date, and period is on it because as soon as you walk in the class, there's going to be a box, and I want you to put your problem of the day work and answer in that box. So you want to already have it all written, the problem all worked out, name, date, and period on it, and even fold it up so as soon as you walk into class, you can put it straight in the box. So it says bring this problem to class completely worked out on one half piece of lined paper. Make sure your name, date, and period is on it now. Fold it in half and drop it in the pod box by the door. So there will be a special box for you to put the problem of the day in. So good luck with the problem of the day and toodles. Thanks for listening.